So, for this entry, we have the word tribute. And I know this has been a bit of a theme the last few days, and it's probably going to be continuing in this theme for a while. But I want to take this opportunity to talk a bit about retro clones and why, for the most part, I'm not interested in them and why I very rarely reviewed them. See, a lot of times a retro clone is basically a modern tech um, interpretation or modern organ organizing and formatting interpretation of a classic game. The reason why I'm not interested in a lot of them, and a lot of the ones that I've experienced are rooted in um, pre-Wizards of the Coast era D&D, is because of the fact that just doing a cleaned up version of what came before, it's still lipstick on a pig. You can put lipstick on a pig, but no matter how much you put on, it's still a pig. And... In a lot of those cases, there's opportunity to um, take that particular sandbox in new ways, and it's not being done. In a lot of these instances, there's the opportunity to do some new spin or something to give it its own identity. Now, there are, of course, exceptions, um, and these often end up getting the nickname of Neo-Clones. But what I want to highlight with this kind of thing is that nostalgia alone will not get very far. Even in this stage where the first-person shooter genre, to use a video game example, has had a lot of throwbacks, each of them does something different. Like, I was playing a medieval earlier today, which is actually an, a completely awesome game, and you should definitely get it if you get the chance. And... While it certainly has some of the DNA of stuff like Hexen and Heretic, it's doing its own thing that's not exactly on the same level, in some cases for the better. A lot of cases when it comes to doing old school tributes, even if they're doing a throwback, they're doing a throwback so slavishly that they're not addressing legitimate flaws that a given work might have. Um... I have very rarely seen an OSR-style game address the fact that casting classes have way too much to do and non-casting classes have way too little to do. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why I've had such a love-hate relationship with D&D &D over the years. I've seen some Neo-clones certainly address this, but they are in the minority. For me, the poster child when it comes to this sort of thing is the Siege Engine from Castles and Crusades, which arguably predates the wave of OSR that we're currently in, but I remember getting the books and I was just not impressed. Whereas something like Adventure Conqueror King System, even with the fact that um, Archon is a friend of mine, um, that particular one impressed me a lot more simply because of the fact that it doesn't it doesn't really consider itself a retro clone and it's doing something that the old AD&D um didn't really tackle or when it did tackle it didn't tackle it all that well and that is focusing on the end game. Now, I've also seen a trend of people doing throwbacks to old Greyhawk and and the like and the more improvisation referee style from those days which is all well and good, but when I look at those, I'm looking at the performance of one particular table. And whenever I address a um, particular game or a particular playstyle, I can't just look at that one example as my reference point. It's certainly one that allows for, that allows for a nice building block for a case, but it is only one building block, and I need enough to actually build a house in this particular um, analogy. Now, I do want to make clear that I don't hate the idea of a retro clone. I find myself more frustrated with the idea that that's where it should stop. Like, you can do your own tribute to what came before and all that, but you can't just rely on that. Otherwise, you're nothing more than a cover band. And there's more than enough cover bands to fill anybody's niche.